Welcome to the eAcademy. In today's episode, we will continue to discuss how to create an interface design in the INT TSH2 keypad. In the previous episode, Marche introduced the elements that can be placed on user screens. These were text, states of partitions, zones and outputs, temperature, date and time, rectangle, panic, fire, auxiliary, and information. This time I will discuss the switch, macro, and link widgets. Let me remind you that our INT TSH2 keypad is connected to the Integra 128 Plus control panel. The panel is already connected to the computer. Let's start configuring the keypad settings in the Deload X program. We locate one of the empty newly added screens. Select the switch widget from the list. As you can guess, it is used to switch the selected output on or off. Here we can indicate which output the widget will be used to control. Next to it, we adjust the icons corresponding to the state of the selected output. Inactive or off state and active state. We can also select the colors of the icons. Color 1 for the inactive state and color 2 for the active state. We can immediately see how the icons look in the selected colors. Last time we showed you how to set the widget size. We can do the same with the widgets we are discussing today. Select one of three sizes. We will now add another widget, the macro. This icon will be used to call up a macro command, i.e. a defined sequence of actions to be performed by the control panel. By default, there are only four items on the macro command list. They are already used on the first screen and are used to arm the system in various modes or to disarm it. If we want to add other macro commands, we must first configure them, but we will return to this in a moment. In this field, we specify whether user authorization will be needed to call the macro. Hold down option means that the macro command will be triggered if you touch the icon on the screen and hold it for some time. If you just touch the icon, nothing will happen. This is particularly useful if you want to avoid accidental activation of a function. If you select the Disabled If Armed option, the icon used to invoke the given macro command will no longer be displayed when the system is armed. So in such situation, this macro will not be available. Important note, unlike other widgets, the icon assigned to a macro is not selected when the screen is edited. It is set during configuration or editing the macro command itself. This is where we also specify whether the icon will have a fixed appearance or will reflect the status of chosen zone or output. Here, in turn, i.e. in the screen settings, we can select one of the three sizes of the previously defined icon and specify what color it will have in the inactive and active states. All right, let's now move on to the macro commands tab. Here we see the four default positions previously mentioned. Those numbered 2, 3 and 4 are responsible for arming all zones. When you hover over the list of partitions, you can see which arming types have been programmed. In turn, macro number 1 is responsible for disarming all zones and clearing the alarms, obviously provided that any alarm has occurred. To make another item appear on the list, click New Macro button. We can change its name. Below is the field for the code. The selected user's code entered here will be used to execute the commands contained in the macro command. Thus, the user whose code is entered must have authority levels granted for triggering all programmed commands. In the event log, this user will be assigned to the events of command triggering. One important thing. Even if a password is entered in this field, but the Authorization Required option was checked in the screen settings, the keypad will still request user code when the icon of this macro has been touched. As mentioned earlier, here we can specify whether the macro icon will indicate the status of the selected zone or output. To do this, we select one of the options from the list, e.g. State Follow Input. Next, we specify a specific zone. Now we select the icons for inactive and active states. As we mentioned earlier, here we do not set their colors. We only do this when we place a macro widget during the screen configuration. 
In this way, if, for example, we want to place the same widget on several screens, on each of them the icon can have a different color scheme to match the specific composition. Now we need to set which commands will be triggered. From the list below, we can select arming and disarming, as well as clearing alarms in the indicated partitions. Next, you can block or unblock the selected zones. Other commands control the outputs, i.e. activating or deactivating them whenever changing their status. The next two items on the list will be used when our alarm system is integrated with KNX devices. We will discuss macro settings of this type in more detail in the episodes dedicated to automation in the KNX standard. The last available command can be used to exit delay time clearing. Let's now add some commands to our macro command. In order to change the sequence in which the commands are executed, select one of them and move it in the list using the arrows. If there is a need to change the parameters of a selected command, remember to click the Change button after making the correction. Only then will the changes be saved. On the other hand, if we wanted to delete a selected command, we just need to select it and click Delete. In the same way, we can delete an entire macro command from the list on the left. Below you can see the Import Macro button. Here you can import macros created in the settings of another keypad. ETHM One Plus module or INT GSM. Let's see how it works. There is only one additional macro in our system, created at the Ethernet module. We select it to see the details. Now we click on the item we want to import. Finally, click Import Selected Macros and now close the window. The new macro has appeared on the list. It can still be edited, e.g. by changing the icon or adding another command. Below the import button, you can see an indicator of the free memory available for macro commands. Remember about it when you add more macro commands, especially if you create a very elaborate interface design. OK, let's go back to the screen we just edited. Let's add the macro we just created. We can see that the state of the widget will change according to the state of the indicated zone. We can still change the colors of the icons for each state. We can immediately see how the icons will look in the inactive and active states. That's all about the macro widget settings. The last widget left to discuss is the link. Let's add it to our screen. As in other cases, we can choose the icon, its color and size. The most important thing, however, is where the link should take us. By default, only the return option is available. So we click the new additional screen button. Another item has appeared on the list. Let's select it. Also note that at the top in the list of all screens, a new tab has appeared for the added additional screen. I'd like to remind you that in the INT TSH2 and INT TSG2 keypads, up to eight user screens can be available in the middle level of the screen. But we can create up to 16 additional screens. One important information, when you operate the keypad, you do not move between the additional screens using the left-right gestures. These screens are accessed by links. So let's take a look at our first additional screen. You remember that we can place many widgets on the user screens. We can do the same with this screen. However, there is one important difference. When we uncheck the Use Theme option, we can change more than the colors of the fonts and icons. In this case, on each additional screen, we can set a different arbitrary graphic as a background. OK, now let's add the macro we prepared earlier. We assume that this screen is to be used only to call this one macro command, so we don't put anything else here. 
we will now upload our project to the keypad to see how the additional screen will behave. We move from the screensaver to the main screen, and now to the side of the screen where the link icon is located. Touch it. OK, we are now at the first additional screen. Please remember that the background graphics set in the program is not displayed because we have not placed a memory card with the uploaded pictures in the keypad socket. All right, but what now? As we mentioned earlier, the right-left gestures don't work here. There is also no link to another screen. So how do we leave this screen? We can only go back to the screensaver. So how can we easily return from the additional screen? We will show you right now. We will now place another link on the screen we are stuck on. This time it will be programmed as return. We change the icon. We save the data to the keypad. As you can see, now with the return link, we can go back from the additional screen. Links can be placed on both user screens and additional screens. In this way, almost any menu structure can be built, but obviously only within the available number of screens and memory allocated to them. Significant information. When you touch the return link placed on the additional screen, you will be taken back to the user screen from which you entered the additional screens level. Okay, now at a slightly fast motion, we are going to configure a number of additional screens containing links to move between these screens. Each of these screens will also have a different background setup. The project has been uploaded to the keypad. In the meantime, we have placed a memory card with the saved graphics used as backgrounds. As you can see, we can move between screens without any problems. Please note that configuration of the INT TSG2 keypad intended for Integra or Integra Plus control panels families is done in almost the same way as for INT TSH2. Finally, it is worth recalling that the Versa control panels family can also be operated by means of both keypads, and they are programmed in a very similar manner. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention and welcome to the next eAcademy meetings. See you soon.